Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Cubot X50. So Cubot, if you've never heard of them, they are one of those smaller phone makers based in Shenzhen in southern China. So I just got the phone. Let's unbox it really quick. So the Cubot X50 retails for around 170 US dollars, I believe. Okay, so we have a paper here saying thank you. So here's a list of features. So you have a 6.67 inch FHD plus display, Android 11, MediaTek 6771, I believe that's the Helio P60, 64 megapixel main camera, 32 megapixel selfie, 45,000 milliampere battery. So it comes with a case, as is usual for these uh, smaller brands. So this is a rubber jelly case. Oh, this is nice. I don't think this is plastic. Should be a pretty bare bones unboxing. So you have a sim ejected tool right here, a quick start guide, more papers, and this must be a charger. Oh, okay, you do get earbuds, USB-C earbuds, USB-C cable, and a charging brick. So I'm gonna set up the phone and then I'll be back. All right, guys. So I've been testing the Cubot X50 for the past two and a half hours. So I have a pretty good impression on what this phone offers you at this. Uh, relatively cheap 170 US dollars price point. So first you have a 6.7 inch LCD display with a resolution of 1080 by 2400. So LCD panel and also just 60 Hertz refresh rate. So it's not the most smooth fluid panel around, but it still looks pretty good. Colors are sharp, vibrant, viewing angles look pretty good. So right now the screen is max brightness. Looks pretty good, even under over cloud conditions right now. The bezels wrapping around the phone are pretty thin. You do have a little bit of a chin, but acceptable for a budget phone. And overall, I think this phone, you know, it looks a little bit bland, but it doesn't look bad. It's not offensive. It's not intrusive. It's a quite minimalistic design. You also have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery inside, which is gonna last you all day because you only have a 60 Hertz panel at 10 AP. So it's not a super pixel dense high refresh screen. One more good thing about this phone is it runs on stock Android. So out of the box, you only get Google apps. I actually had to install some additional apps. You don't even have a photo album app in there. You have to use Google Photos if you want to look at your photos. And stock Android definitely is preferable to the Android skins in these smaller Chinese brands like Duty, for example. Although in my opinion, I do find stock Android a little bit plain. So that means there is no shortcut gestures like double tap to lock, double tap to wake maybe draw a circle to launch your camera. None of that is here because this is just stock Android. And also, one of my biggest gripes with stock Android on the Pixel is this Google search bar is stuck at the bottom of the home screen and you cannot get rid of it. If you long press on it, it doesn't do anything. I hate that. So those are all the good things you get for 170 bucks. Now, there are obviously some parts of the phone that Cuba had to cut corners to meet that price point. And some of it, some of it is pretty disappointing. So like I said, the chassis, it's plastic, very plasticky, and because this is an LCD panel, there is no in-display fingerprint sensor. Instead, the fingerprint sensor is right here on the right side of the chassis. I'm okay with that, a side-mounted fingerprint scanner is fine, but it is separate from the power button, meaning there's a power button and then a fingerprint sensor, and I think that's a little bit redundant. If you can have a fingerprint scanner on the side, just make it as part of the power button. You have volume rockers on the left side, USB-C port down below with a single bottom fine speaker that it's pretty weak. When you push it to max volume, you actually get a lot of distortion in sound and relatively no bass. The SIM tray is also on the left side. You can put two SIM cards in there, but for expandable storage, you have to use TF card, not as micro SD card, which is a little bit disappointing. There is 128 gigs of internal storage in there though, but it is not UFS 3.1, it is UFS 2.1. And the RAM, eight gigs of RAM, they're also LPDDR4 RAM, not five. And finally, the processor in this is a Helio P60. It's a 12 nanometer chipset from MediaTek. And I think in mid 2021, it is just a little bit underpowered. For example, in Geekbench, it scored a 298 single core, and 1283 multi-core. So these are pretty low scores. And when I played the game Asphalt 9, which is a graphically intensive game, I started seeing 
frame drops you know a little bit of stutter here and there i mean not too bad that it really affects gameplay too much but it's visually jarring now to be fair asphalt 9 is a graphically intensive game you play something a little bit lighter like angry birds fruit ninja it will run fine and for other day-to-day -day tasks like sending emails going on instagram watching netflix this phone will operate fine too now as for the camera system so you see there's four lenses here but it is really just a dual camera system 64 megapixel main camera with a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera around the front in this hole punch you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera and surprise the main camera the 64 megapixel actually produces some pretty good looking shots granted you know i took them in good lighting conditions but these shots are sharp colors are accurate and the shutter speed is pretty snappy there isn't that shutter delay that i get from some of the cheaper phones the other two lenses if you're wondering what they are one of them it's a three megapixel macro sensor that produces an okay macro shot and the fourth is a 0.3 megapixel like photo sensitive sensor so basically useless just look at this as a dual camera phone and for a budget phone from a brand that's not that famous the main camera is surprisingly good. However, video performance suffers quite a bit. Okay, this is 1080p 30 video shot with a Cubot X50. This phone cannot shoot 4K footage. So 1080 is the sharpest resolution you're gonna get. So I'm shooting this uh, handheld right now. Obviously, stabilization doesn't look too good. And uh, this is selfie camera footage shot with the Cubot X50. The sound you're hearing is also coming from the internal mic. How do I sound? Let me step in the shade. So you see it struggles with dynamic range a little bit. It's kind of blowing out the background. My face is drenched in shadows. But you know, it's a slightly difficult, challenging situation. Testing, testing, how do I sound? Let me step inside. How do I sound, how do I sound? Testing, testing. So overall for 170 US dollars, in a vacuum, I think the Cubot X50 is fine. You're getting a modern design, a pretty good screen, a large battery, and decent performance if, you just, if you're not a heavy gamer. It's 170 bucks in a vacuum, that's fine. But we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a real world where there are phones like the Poco X3 NFC or the Redmi Note 10. Both of those phones are from Xiaomi, a much bigger company. So they give you better software updates, better after sales service, probably better warranty period. And also it's just a little bit more reliable all around because Xiaomi is such a huge company, they have money to pour into the software. For example, the night mode in Xiaomi phones are excellent. The night mode in this phone is basically useless. So the fact that the Poco X3 NFC and the Redmi Note 10 is only about 40 to 50 US dollars more, that makes this phone tough to recommend for $180. However, I do concede that if someone is on a tight budget and they want to buy a budget phone, that extra $40, $50 is still kind of a big deal. I mean, if you're really low on money, $180 is still a lot cheaper than $240. And not everybody wants to use a Xiaomi phone. Maybe they like the stock Android experience. So if you want a clean, Google Android experience, and you don't want to spend more than 180 bucks, and the Cubot X50 is just about the only game in town right now. I do think if you buy this phone not knowing there are Redmi phones out there for 180 bucks, I don't think you're gonna have a lot of complaint about. I think this phone will serve you well. But if you know your smartphones, you know that like a Poco X3 NFC is much better than this phone, and it's only like 50 US dollars more. If you have that extra money to spend, it's it's a tough recommendation for this phone. And the Helio P60 really is lagging in mid 2021. So anyway, that's about it for this unboxing and hands-on of the Cubot X50. If you wanna keep up to date with all the latest gadgets out of China, Japan, South Korea, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. I have a lot more content coming up. I have several products I haven't even opened yet that needs to be reviewed. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and please stay healthy. Wear a mask if you step out, even if you're vaccinated because there are variants flying around. Just wait a few months, you know, just keep yourself safe and your family. Thanks.